Hello, everybody. This is Robert L. Reed speaking. I'm working with my partners, Christina Cole and Victoria Jacqua, and this is a video to show you the recent progress in the global open source quality assist assurance systems um, provenance tracking system, which has been developed very quickly by Harry Pearson. The current system uh, has some test features, which I'm, I'm going to explain. I'm going to explain to you the main use case of this minimal viable product. Some of the features that you're about to see will be removed before the product launches uh, because to protect the privacy of the users of the various devices, we don't actually list the devices that are in the database, and we'll explain that later. So let me suppose that I want to begin the provenance tracking of a box of surgical masks, which I actually have here. So we first use the system to create a device ID and a QR code, which can be affixed to it. So I'm going to call this Rob's N95 mask. Now, as you can see here, you, you get a couple of things. You get a device key, which is a, about a 25 character um, string, which can be used to look up this device. But you also get this QR code. And uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to copy this image and print it on a sheet of paper and then affix it to the box of mask I have as if I were beginning the tracking of that box or if as if I were a manufacturer who was making it for the first time. Now uh, I have here a box of surgical mask and I printed out the QR code which was provided to us by the Gosquas system here and I affixed it with transparent tape to this box of uh, surgical mask. This is a real commercial box of of surgical mask and now I'm going to um, point my phone at this and see what happens when I point it at the QR code so it may not be visible but this gave us a link here which we can click on actually brings us to the Gasquas asset record for Rob's N95 mask now, I'm going to pretend that I'm in actual chain of custody for this device. So, using the interface on my phone, I'm going to say, received in Austin, Texas. And I'm going to add a tag. I'm going to use the tag received, which may make it just a little bit easier for people to understand it. And I'm going to hit submit. And now you can see there are two provenance records. Now I'm going to switch back to using the uh, desktop computer. Now, um, if I view the provenance record for this um, device, I see that the thing that I created with my phone, where I said received in Austin, is, is actually here. It's a permanent part of the global public record for this device if you have the device key which is encoded in the QR code. Now suppose that I want to ship this let's say to Guatemala so I'm going to say Rob ships to Guatemala and maybe I put a tracking number in here and I add a tag shipped We'll make that a little easier later. I hit the submit button, and now we see that there are three records there. Now, you'll notice that this is connected to the device key, which was printed when we created the device. And I can construct the URL that way. So if I copy this URL and I uh, search for something like the van, the who, and then I come back and type this URL in, I get back to the exactly the same record. Now, let's suppose that this has been received in Guatemala. Whoever gets it may want to say, um, Juan received in good order in San Jose. 
and they might use the tag received. Then they might say um, Juanita inspected 50 mask present look good and use the tag inspected. And then, uh, for e example, um, uh, the final disposition of this device might be um, deployed to clinic uh, near Orinoco. And we would use the tag deployed for that. Now, um, if someone were to use their phone and get to this record via the QR code, they would see a time-stamped, very difficult to forge list of the provenance, which shows this being created in Austin, Texas, shipped to Guatemala, received, inspected, and then finally deployed. This should give uh, someone a great deal of trust and confidence that what they have received is what they say it says it is or what it claims to be. If something had gone wrong, they could have entered that information here. They could have said, this looks counterfeit, this does not pass inspection. We have the ability to upload images, which of course is, is very important for either paperwork or images. So let us suppose that I am the person in the clinic in Guatemala and I've received this, but I don't necessarily have a computer, but of course I, I have a phone. Um, and so my action is to point it at this URL, and then I go to the link here, and now we see a set of records which is somewhat complete, but I'm going to do something a little different. Here, I'm going to open the box, and I'm going to take a photo of it, and to do that, I use the Choose File button here. And that brings up my camera automatically on my phone. So I simply take a photo of this box. And here is a photo of the inside of the box. And it shows that, in fact, there aren't 50 max left in there. But I'm going to use that photo. And I'm going to add a provenance and I'm going to say only 10 mask here. And I'm going to say, I'm going to add a tag. Actually, I'm going to add a tag problem. And then I hit submit. And if you go to that URL, which I invite you to do, you will see that the image and my record has been added to the provenance, which of course is extremely important.